The Game Boy Game of the Week is Dragonheart from 1996. So I was really excited when I discovered this game. Uh, I first saw it just, you know, within the past year. Uh, this game is, I was really excited to play it. You gotta, you know, really put some time into it and see how I liked it. This game is both absolutely mind-blowingly amazing to me, but sadly, yet somehow underwhelming. It's a complicated emotion. So when I first started up this game, I was, right, as I was blown away. This is a first-person adventure game on the Game Boy. Action, eh, it's an adventure game on the Game Boy. So first-person view, you know, like, uh, what is it, uh, Skyrim? Uh, you're walking around, you're walking around, like Skyrim, you're walking around the woods with your sword in hand and meeting people, talking to people in, in first-person view. And imagine that, scaled down to the Game Boy, and I, I was just so impressed. It's super immersive, of course, <laughs> it's not nearly as, uh, really, it's really, really scaled down, but still... It feels like you're in the forest, walking around exploring. Uh, so the first person view adventure really, uh, really surprised me and really, really, really incredibly done. Really well done. Um, the second thing that surprised me was most of this game is a point and click adventure. So thinking back to the 90s, uh, point and click adventures, what were some? Uh, Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis, uh, Day of the Tentacle, Sam and Max hit the road. Uh, it was kind of a genre that it was a super popular genre that kind of died out overnight. But yeah, as far as I know, this is the only point-and-click adventure, only thing that could be considered a point-and-click adventure on the original Game Boy. So that's kind of cool, really unique, and I think it's pretty well done. It's once again, it's much much scaled down compared to other point-and-click adventures, but still, it's that genre. Uh, there's also action scenes. So, in regards to the graphics, I already mentioned the first-person view sections, which is the main bulk of the game. Uh, when an action happens, whether you're fighting a guard or fighting a dragon, the gameplay switches over to a side side view, 2D side view, and this game presents itself uh, as uh, what is it, light, lifelike or realistic? Generally, generally speaking, realistic. So the, uh, the graphics generally avoid looking cartoonish and look much more lifelike. The trees look lifelike, the mountains look lifelike, the dragons look you know, as realistic as a... more realistic than they do like a cartoon. Many of the, the pictures of the people are all taken straight from the movie. And when they do are represented on screen as sprites, they're generally realistic proportions and not like cartoonish generally speaking which is also a little unique on the Game Boy so we've got uh, first person view uh, exploration and adventure we've got point and click puzzles we've got 2D side scrolling action well, single screen uh, action yeah this game is a uh, this game is a is, is a sight. It's a it's a trip. So this game is an original game. It's not a port. Uh, you know, like the Wikipedia, for example, will list it on the same page. It currently lists it on the same page as like the PlayStation One game. Uh, but it's a it's a completely original game. Very different from all the other ones. Uh, it does. It follows. So this is based on the movie uh, Dragonheart. And so sometimes, many times, a, a movie tie-in game will turn me off, but I think this is done really well. I think the, I think the movie tie-in aspect is, I think it's both really well tied in with the movie, but at the same time it completely stands on its own. Uh, the title screen gives a full story introduction to the general premise of the movie. Uh, in game, the characters it generally follows the the plot of the movie, but at the same time, it's always explaining itself throughout the way. And I like that it really takes its time. You know, how how many? It, it'd be so easy for a game to say, 
here's all the setup, and then stage one starts the action, and then you play through the whole game, and at the end, oh, it's the same action through the whole game, and then at the end, oh, you you finish the game, you, it's the end of the movie. Well, that doesn't happen in this game. Instead, you actually progress through the movie, or through the story, I should say, which is nice. You kind of go along for the ride. It stands, the point being, it stands on its own. Uh, you meet characters throughout the game, from the movie. I like that the, I think it's the monk, is generally, he's just kind of comic relief. He does, he does serve a purpose in some parts, but generally speaking, he's just comic relief, which is kind of fun. The game is, uh, the game has uh, characters and dialogue and scenes in it that are superfluous to progression in the game. So it, it actually, there's, the puzzles challenge you. It's not just find the next, it's not just go to the next, go to the next uh, puzzle solution. You actually have to hunt around for it and figure out what to do next. Which I really appreciated. So a lot of the gameplay during the adventure sections are trying to figure out where to go next. Trying to figure out who to talk to, what to do with items you've just received. Uh, one thing that I found was interesting was every level, I think there's about eight levels in the game. Now, I did not play through the entire game to make this review. I think I played a little over halfway through, at least halfway through. And the game is split up into different levels. It's not one big world to explore. Uh, each level follows generally the same layout, generally the same series uh, progression, where you begin by exploring the woods, uh, you meet people, you find out some problem that needs solving, uh, you talk to from you visit person to person to find out a way to solve the problem. Uh, they help you progress to the next section. Uh, there's often guards to fight, new people to meet, and then it usually culminates in a traveling to a dragon cave to kill the local dragon. Um, it could easily become repetitive, but I think the developers did a really good job of mixing things up. There, for example, right, so level one is explore the woods, find a guy that will take you to the other side of the woods, uh, where you meet another guy that teaches you how to get to the dragon, and then you explore that cave and meet the dragon and, and kill him. Uh, in later levels, you'll have to figure out a way to free prisoners. Uh, in one level, I was really clever, you very quickly get thrown into a dungeon, and you have to escape the dungeon. And once again, it's all, it's all kind of the same exploring a new maze and trying to get out but it's done it's presented to the player in different ways that feels clever and original so i really appreciated that <laughs> in regards to uh, replay value there's pretty much i want to say there's very little replay value but that's not necessarily a bad thing due to the nature of the game being a point and click adventure there's going to be genres that do poorly with replay value and I think this just goes along with the ish, just goes along with the genre this type of game is not going to have a uh, replay value but I really appreciate the gameplay that was presented I'm going through it one time uh, I was a little confused by the fighting I, I was really excited about the battle sequences but also a little confused so when it goes into the 2D side side view battle mode, whether you're fighting a guard or fighting a dragon, uh, you've got some really cool moves. And how, how do I put it? They're not cool moves. <laughs> they are a good set of moves. You can you have a shield. You can put out your shield high, medium, and low, and you can swing your sword high, medium, and low. Uh, and I believe the the attackers can do similar. Your opponents can do similar. And so it's kind of a cool cool idea for a back and forth. In practice, I haven't quite figured it out. I'm not sure if there is anything to figure out. I hope there's something to figure out because it ends up just being, you know, just kind of whack your sword, swing your sword and whack them before they swing theirs. And with the dragons, it's just kind of swing as fast as you can and kill the dragon before he kills you. Uh, the enemies do get more life and 
become harder throughout the game. So it might get to the point where that's not a legitimate strategy. I'm not too sure though. Uh, generally speaking, they're they're exciting and they're kind of fun to deal with. Oh, I might as well mention now. So this is the only time, I think this is the only time you can die in the game, is during those battle sequences. Uh, so you start each level with a set of health, and you that's the all all the health you get for that entire stage. So if you die for any reason, if you lose all your health for any reason before the stage ends, it's game over and you start back at the beginning of the level. It, well, I mean, it, you go back to the title screen. You can use a password to get back to where you were, but you're back at the beginning of the level. Uh, this is kind of, I don't know. It, it's frustrating in the sense that for many of the levels, the first 90% is you know walking around, finding people, you know, get a turnip, uh, bring it to the person who needs a turnip, get some information, and so on and so on. And then uh, you get to the one battle at the end, and oops, I died. I gotta go find the turnip again and do that all over again. I'm not really sure what I would do differently. Uh, this hasn't really bothered me. Like, I personally haven't haven't died uh, in any of the stages so far. I think I'm up to stage five out of around eight, and it hasn't really bothered me that I haven't died yet. The game's not that challenging, at least in the first many levels, in regards to fighting or losing health. Uh, it's fun and ch it's challenging in the sense of trying to, you know, solve the puzzles, solve the adventure. Uh, but yeah, I'm not sure what I would do differently about uh, dying and having to replay the whole level. Well, I guess it's fine. I'd rather they do that than making it just play to win. Or, I'm sorry, play until you win. In regards to the graphics, so I already mentioned the first-person view sections. Uh, they are more lifelike than they are cartoony, which I really appreciate. Uh, the whole first-person action-adventure looks incredible. Uh, this game, so it was made in 1996, which was nearing the end of the Game Boy's lifespan. I think the Game Boy Color came out in, I want to say, 98. And uh, by this point, so this game is, <laughs> I kind of, I noticed almost immediately when you power it on, you got so many full screen graphics, uh, like sc screenshots from the movie of characters. I was thinking, oh man, this game's gotta be big. This cartridge, this ROM has gotta be big. And it is. This ROM is uh, 512 kilobytes. And if I got my math right, that's a four megabit ROM. So this is the same size as Donkey Kong Land, the Donkey Kong Land games. And the only games on the, the only official games for the Game Boy that are any bigger are games like are the 8 megabits games, like Pokemon, which is, you know, enormous. But yeah, so this is, comparatively speaking, this is a very large game, ROM. And it shows the graphics are detailed, they're unique, lots of unique assets, art assets. And uh, it's really, <laughs> I really like looking at it. It's a really, really beautiful game, in my opinion. Uh, one of my favorite little... Uh, little tidbits in the graphics is when you're walking around exploring the forest, exploring the woods, you can see a dragon flying around off in the distance. <laughs> it's so cool. <laughs> in regards to the sound and music, so mostly the music, there's not too many sound effects in the game, the sound effects are fine. Uh, in regards to the the music, I was re really, really disappointed. So the music is probably the biggest drawback in this game. Uh, there are essentially two songs, and both of those songs <laughs> uh, sound almost identical. They're, they're hard to distinguish from each other. And so, and, and they just play constantly throughout the whole game. Every level has the same music playing in the background. It is very repetitive, and it's not the most pleasant song. And I think the developers kind of knew that because on the title screen you get the option to turn the music off, which always makes me laugh. Like, oh guys, what are we going to do? The music's annoying. Well, <laughs> we could make better music, but or we can give them the option to turn it off. <sighs> now, once again, I'm not sure what I would have done differently for the music. It it fits the tone of the game. It's it's a nice... It's not a nice song. It's... <laughs> It's a fine song, it's just not nice to listen to over and over again throughout the entire game. 
So this game is really close to being really incredible. I already spent a, I spent a lot of time talking about all the stuff that really, really impressed me about this game. You know, the story, the graphics, the three different gameplay styles all merged into one. Yeah, this is just really, really nicely done. Unfortunately, there were, I think, a few things hold this game back from being really good. So, for instance, uh, in the first person view exploration areas, there's this slight graphical oddity that makes makes what you're looking at a little confusing. Uh, for example, there can be a whole line of trees to the right of you, but the game will present it as a clear path in front of you, trees to the right, and then it'll look like there's another gap of trees to the right. The reality is there's no gap of trees. There's no path to walk through. It just kind of looks like it due to the, the graphics being kind of glitchy or something. So that's unfortunate. As good as the graphic looks, the graphics look, they're, they do, they're a little glitchy and what, and showing you what actually, the reality of the world in front of you. And it's, it's too bad because once you, every, every world you explore has a map kind of hidden, laying around in the ground somewhere. And once you find that map, you can select the map and you can walk around while looking at the map, kind of like the old uh, Doom, Doom games from 1993. And <laughs> exploration is so much easier when you're just using the map to walk around. Like, oh, this forest finally makes sense. Just walk around the map. Walk around while looking at the map. And which is a shame because the the first person view of the game world looks so good, but it is really easy to get lost then. And so walking around while staring at the map looks a lot easier. You know, like a tourist or something. Uh, another thing that's a little frustrating is the control is just a little bit off. Most of the time, exploring the world, the first person view of the world, is quite smooth. But on occasion, I'm not really sure what's happening. The controls feel a little sticky. Like I'll turn or try to start walking and the controller inputs don't register. <sighs> My best guess is that I don't know. It's either in my head or maybe the game is loading assets and starting and trying to draw them on the screen quickly enough and they're not they're not going quite fast enough. I don't know. So the controls feeling a little sticky is frustrating at times. Uh, the game over punishment is a little too harsh. Needing to replay all the you know, simple boring sections to get back to the fight that you lost in is frustrating. Uh, I already mentioned the music is bad. Uh, there's little, very little replay value, but that's only important if you're looking into replaying it. Playing it for the first time, you know, is it presents a really nice adventure. <sighs> so yeah, I am so impressed with what the what the developers tried with this game. Uh, it looks it, it, it looks and plays great on the original Game Boy. Uh, it's easy to see. The sprites are big. Yeah. It's so impressive, but man, there's just, I think it's the, the parts are better than the sum, which is unfortunate, because I, I really wanted to love this game. I do love this game, uh, despite its faults. Uh, yeah, I think it's, I think it's worth trying. If you're into the Game Boy and you haven't seen this game, I think it's worth checking out just because of how unique it is compared to all other, any other Game Boy game I've, I've played. It's got a great atmosphere, it's got really nice uh, visuals, and once again, it's the only point-and-click adventure game that I know of on the Game Boy, which is really cool. <laughs>